Hi, everybody. Uh, I originally gave this talk as part of the 2023 Airflow Summit, and due to some issues with the live recording, I am now re-recording it from home. Uh, my talk was part of the community track at the summit, and I'm excited to make sure that it is available to everybody in the community now that the summit has concluded. So without further ado, I'm going to be talking about supporting the Airflow community with lessons learned from doing over 100 Airflow webinars. Uh, to start with an introduction, I'm Kenton Danis. I lead the developer relations team at Astronomer. As with most people in DevRel, I did not start off here. I've been a data engineer myself and worked in the field, but dating back to around 2019 or in the days of Airflow 1.9, if you measure time that way, uh, all of my roles have been at least partially about helping folks adopt Airflow. Uh, I really enjoy this work and I'm excited I get to focus uh, on it so much now um, on the Airflow community. So bringing that to my talk today, uh, I'm going to dive uh, into how developer relations helps the Airflow community, uh, what is the purpose, what problems can DevRel help solve. Uh, as you've guessed by the title, I will spend a lot of time specifically on Astronomer's webinar program, and I'll walk through five lessons that we've learned from doing these events now many, many times. Um, but to start with why this is important, everybody is probably aware that the Airflow community is pretty big. Uh, but even to me, these numbers are pretty staggering and I live in this stuff every day. Uh, Airflow is used all over the world. Uh, it has over 13 million downloads a month often and more than, uh, well, I said here 2.4 thousand contributors. This is actually wrong now. I think it's 2.6. It was even wrong when I gave this talk at the summit. So even after a couple of weeks, this is out of date. Um, but with all of that, it's one of the biggest Apache projects out there. Um, I think this contribute. Uh, so yeah, it's actually pretty hard to keep up with. Um, and the ecosystem around it is enormous as well. Um, so there's a huge network of providers, external tools, and more that make Airflow the flexible tool we all know and love. Um, and the project also moves really fast. So new Airflow releases are frequent and they are consistent. Uh, minor releases, especially in the last couple of years, come out every three to four months. Um, another slide that it's actually quite difficult to keep up to date. Uh, you can see that even with squishing everything together, we can only fit even the last uh, kind of two-ish years of releases on this slide. Um, so there's a lot going on. And these releases are important leaps forward for the project. They're not just, you know, minor tinkering with how the scheduler works under the hood, um, although scheduler improvements are certainly included in releases. Um, but rather, these releases, you know, contain pretty game-changing new features, things like dynamic task mapping, data sets, testing and debugging tools, UI updates, um, way more than I could talk about here or, again, fit on these slides. Um, but these things really change not just how you use Airflow and kind of the day-to-day -day experience, but the actual use cases you're even able to implement. Um, but despite how great the improvements are in each release, we know that people can get left behind. Um, many users do not upgrade right away or are even very delayed in doing so. I know sometimes this is due to organizational constraints, so this certainly isn't to say that every DAG author doesn't want to upgrade right away, um, but we know for a variety of reasons this just doesn't always happen. Um, Sometimes, again, it's even very out of date. This quote at the bottom is unfortunately from a webinar we did just a couple of months ago. Um, but even though that's obviously an extreme case, we often see that even if people are staying relatively up to date, they may not be taking advantage of the latest and greatest features. They might not know they exist. They might not think they're relevant for them. Maybe they can't find the time to ever implement them. Um, so what does DevRel have to do with this? Um, again, we obviously think that that's not a great sign for a project that's moving so quickly. We want everybody to be getting the most out of Airflow and um, taking advantage of all of the great developer time and effort that's going into this. Um, so our goals for Airflow from a DevRel perspective can generally be summed up with these points. Uh, we want to ensure that existing users know how new features can make their lives easier, uh, new users to know Airflow can support their use case, and everybody to know how to implement the features they need and get them to production. And um, these are all equally important and they all serve to strengthen the Airflow project. Uh, this sounds great, but it can be quite challenging for such a large community, right? Um, to use the actual ecosystem metaphor, we need to foster the entire ecosystem and many types of users, um, not just one type. 
Uh, the actual metaphor here is you can only you can't only support one species if you want an entire ecosystem to thrive. You have to support everything together, um, and that applies to airflow too. Uh, if we only ever talked to brand new airflow users or spoke to you know people implementing ML ops with airflow or one type of use case, we wouldn't be fostering the entire community and we wouldn't see the results that we're looking for. And we found that community webinars can help with this. Uh, they're free, they're highly accessible. Uh, you can watch recordings after the event and they provide a more interactive way to learn than say reading a tutorial. Uh, my team has done a lot of Airflow content over the last couple of years. Uh, I've been working in DevRel and our webinars in my opinion are the best way that we interface with the Airflow community. So um, as is the basis for the title of today's presentation, Astronomer's webinar program is quite seasoned now. Um, we've been holding events every week for over two and a half years now. Um, we've done over a hundred of them uh, with over 20 different speakers, including some from outside of Astronomer. Um, this now also means that I, um, having run this program, no longer remember every topic that we've done. <laughs> um, so that was definitely um, a bit of a transition for me personally. but. Yeah, so every week we deep dive into a very wide variety of topics, including things like new releases, new features, um, popular use cases like data quality, ML and Airflow, local development, and a lot more. Um, and we've reached a lot of people doing this. We've had over 7,000 unique registrations across all of our events. Um, and through that, we've gotten tons of valuable questions, feedback, and engagement from the community. So what have we learned? Um, I promised five lessons. So here we go. I will go through those. Um, lesson one is demo, demo, demo. Um, demos are really important. With as many users as we speak to and as big as the community as Airflow is, we obviously can't take into account everybody's specific situation. So we found the best thing we can do is let the features speak for themselves. Um, and we always demo live in these events. Um, as everybody, anybody who has ever given a technical talk knows, uh, live demos can be really tough, but they're a lot more engaging. And they also allow you to answer questions by showing things. Um, I do realize the irony of saying this during a talk where I'm not going to do any live demos. Uh, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend live demoing in every talk that I give or that anybody gives. Um, but for webinars in particular that are meant to be like a standing resource that somebody can re-review and um, learn how to implement features or a use case, I believe the live demo is really important. Um, and finally, we've also gotten feedback directly from our attendees that spending more time on demos, um, again, makes them both more informative and a future resource for implementation. We really value that feedback and we want to take it into account. Okay, lesson two related to what we demo is to talk about new features a lot. Um, I mentioned earlier that we know getting widespread adoption of new features can be hard, especially in a big community, uh, but it's really important to make sure that everybody gets the most out of Airflow. Anybody still on Airflow 2.2 or even earlier, uh, we hope not, but we know it happens. Um, they're simply not getting the same experience as somebody on a more recent and importantly supported version of Airflow. Um, but you can imagine as a user of Airflow, there are a lot of new features out there, right? These things, as I said before, come really frequently um, and it takes time to learn them. Uh, we wanna provide the community support for that learning to happen. Um, so after doing a lot of these events, we've learned that especially for big features, one webinar isn't enough. And for topics that we believe are transformative for Airflow users, we will cover them repeatedly and usually try to do multiple events with different focuses kind of through the lens of different use cases, again, to cater to that large base of users. So something, you know, a new feature like DAG.Test, we will cover in different, um, four different use cases. We'll cover the feature itself as it comes out new. Um, and then again, kind of in different ways that people might apply that feature so that we can try and cater to that really big base. Um, and that leads me to lesson three, which is use use cases. Um, so you can't just talk about what a feature is and how to implement it. You have to talk about how it can be used and why that matters to actually get adoption. Um, abstract examples are not the same as the real world, right? Anybody who's ever tried to implement an Airflow feature will know that. Um, and so when you're trying to figure out what of all that new stuff is relevant to you um, as the developer, we want to help provide inspiration on um, how Airflow can help with the use case that you're actually working with. 
Um, in my experience, everybody generally pigeonholes their tools where they say, you know, I use Airflow for this, for X, Y, Z, and that's kind of where it stays. Um, but Airflow is obviously purposefully flexible and people often realize they can do more with it than they originally thought. I hear this story over and over in the community of people who are expanding the way they use Airflow in their organization. Um, and we want to, again, help cater to that. Uh, we found that while these events, you know, naturally get less attendance, which makes sense, a particular use case just isn't going to be relevant to everybody. Not everybody is doing, um, you know, machine. ML ops with Airflow or um, ingesting data with Fivetran and Airflow, um, the events will also get more engagement, right? People already know they're looking to solve a specific problem rather than just generally learning about a topic. And that's valuable to us as well. And we work that into our goals for our DevRel program. So it's not just about um, total you know, number of people. Again, it's also about catering to that broad community and use cases is one of the ways that we do that. All right, lesson four is don't underestimate the day-to-day. -day. Uh, so I mentioned that way back um, uh, pre-2020, um, when I was just getting started in the Airflow 1.9, 1.10 days, um, if you can believe that, uh, I was working as a data engineering consultant and I was very hands-on with implementing Airflow at big companies. Um, and many times since then, I have thought, wow, my life would be so much easier now if I had had access to the tools that are part of the Airflow ecosystem today. Um, I spent a ton of time fighting with local development environments, struggling to test my DAGs, um, generally breaking production much more than I would have liked, given that I was also the one that had to fix it. Um, but all of that to say, right, the process of developing DAGs, testing them, debugging them, and getting them to production is, I would say, not super shiny, um, but it's one that every single DAG author deals with, right? This is just part of the Airflow experience, and it's really important. Um, small improvements here, things like the DAG.test function that I mentioned earlier, they can have a huge impact in the day-to-day. Um, I'm pretty sure there were at least several talks uh, at the Airflow Summit just about this topic. Um, and so unsurprisingly, we consistently find that this day-to-day -day step is um, frequently requested and very widely attended. So again, we want to cater to what is going to help the Airflow community the most, um, and we will continue to uh, cover things like this with our webinar program. Okay, and finally, lesson five is community over code. Uh, this was a track in the Airflow Summit um, for some of the talks, and we it was there because we know that Airflow is only as strong as its community, right? Great code alone is not enough. Uh, and we try to take that mentality into our webinars as well. We're talking to people, not just presenting technical implementations. Um, it can be, you know, hard to remember that when you're doing these things virtually via Zoom, you're just talking into the void, but we really try and remember that there are, you know, people on the other end of those computers. Um, basic things here go a long way, and I put basic in quotes because uh, these things, you know, sound really simple, but they can actually be quite challenging to implement at scale in every single week. Um, but that to us, that looks like, you know, having quality presentations that are easily understandable, interesting, and again, take into account the feedback that we get from our attendees. That's really important to us. We want these to continue to be personal kind of events. Um, we try to make our content as accessible as possible. So we always provide recordings. This is something I believe in very strongly. Um, Airflow is a global, busy community. Not everybody is going to be able to join live. Um, as much as I'm continually impressed by the number of people who join from what I would consider crazy time zones uh, for working hours at our live events, and I love to see them there, um, we understand that's not always possible. And we want to ensure that nobody misses out because of that. Um, so these events will um, always uh, remain free and uh, again, remain um, recordings available after the fact. Uh, as I mentioned before, these events um, are successful because they can be more engaging than, say, reading a tutorial or um, a blog post. And part of that is because we have an open chat and we always do live Q&A, um, also things I believe very strongly in. Um, this is so people can get their personal questions answered. It's not easy to be put on the spot like this. You can imagine how I felt doing live Q&A for a webinar on debugging Airflow. Um, as I joked that maybe one of the only ones where it was more difficult for me as the MC working behind the scenes than the actual presenter. 
Um, but again, it's really worth it for people to get that personal help and feel heard. And it also gives us really valuable feedback, right? We get to understand what people are struggling with, what use cases they're working with, what could be improved in the Airflow project, what could be improved in our content. And we're taking all of that feedback and using it for our work and we're feeding it back to the Airflow community. Um, so with all of those lessons, uh, conclusion, we continue to grow a webinar program that we're really proud of and we feel is an asset to the Airflow community. Um, and the program is ongoing. We look forward to the next 100 webinars and what we'll learn from those. Uh, we've got a lot of great topics coming up in the program. Some of these have happened since the Airflow Summit when I wrote this slide. Um, and the schedule is packed. So that brings me to my calls to action here, which is to register for our webinar. We would love to have you join us. Um, during my Airflow Summit talk, I asked uh, the live audience to vote for our next topic. Um, the survey is now closed, unfortunately. However, if you do have topics that you would like to see um, or feedback you would like to give us on our program, please find me on email or LinkedIn and reach out. Um, your feedback is very, very valuable to us, um, and I would love to talk to you. And that's all I've got today. So it was lovely to see folks in person uh, at the summit this year, and I hope to see you all for next year's edition.